hello everybody and welcome back to another video and here we will see on how to start the a330 300 that's the old version so first we're going to pull up our text file and it's already loaded so our a320 checklist but the a330 is one and is almost the same thing so yes so first what we're going to do is we're going to do all the checks so cockpit operations engine master 1 and 2 is off you can see that it's off engine mode selector is known and then the weather radar is also off and then there is our landing gear lever which if you might be able to see is over here and it's down and then both wiper selector which is these little things they are the wipers both wiper selectors off and check the battery now we go over here check the battery no not that. and then we check all the batteries so all of them have to be above 25.5 so here they are all above 25.5 and then external power supply turn that on because it says as required now we take i mean we do the fire the apu fire test which we'll do right now as you can see it's showing there that the APU is on fire and the master warning switch went on so that is what it is then we go ahead and start the APU so first we just need to check all the batteries and this is off and then we press APU gen because then that allows us to start the APU and then um, here it'll say the when it's starting and like like once it reaches to the red zone it will start it'll say a avail here under this so that's when we turn off the external power supply so we'll just wait for it to start this small thing that is over here which is really cool you can there's a timer and there's small watch it says ET so once we take off it's going to start and everything is starting up like normal yeah now it says a whale so now we're going to go to the overhead panel and turn off our external supply and then we set the air conditioning panel so we set basically means we turn off all the white lights and we turn on the AP bleed and you so this these knobs that say cockpit and cabin over here so this is your air conditioning so this is 20 degrees the green arrow so we just want to set it a little bit lower than them and then uh, we need to set the cockpit lights so usually we'd have like a bunch of stuff like everywhere for lights but like sometimes you just can't find them the floodlights we are going to increase that basically all the lights if bright as you can see stuff is coming on because we have a uh, night flight so everything is going to start turning on is really cool sometimes you see 
Now the floodlight pedestal. We're just going to increase that. And once that's done, we have to do another set of lights. So we go here, that's already set to bright. And now what we do is there should be these knobs usually over here. I don't know if you can see them. There are knobs usually over here. And then we set that to full. And our cockpit lights are set. And as you can see, our very nicely has lit up. And everything's there. Now next EFB status. So we're going to skip a bunch of this because um, we we don't have this like M A M E L and yes so then we can obtain the airfield data and airfield data is nothing but ATIS and uh, you can find it on the airport so once you click on the airport you just have to see so there's Bangalore Tower and this stuff so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go to our oops, our panel over here and yeah here is first what you can like do a lot of stuff here make it really cool and we've got flight number airline and that stuff you've got like everything there and you can set your name and then Chennai but controller Chennai so we usually have um, like stuff here at which you can see the frequency so Bangalore International Ground Control is 121.650 so we're going to set that over here so it's 121.705 so we just we need to make that 6 Six five zero yes, and then we insert, and now we should be able to talk to them, and they don't. They usually give the ATIS, but then, or uh, they didn't give the ATIS this time. Then, yes. Then, once this is done, check uh, the oxygen pressure. over here so it says that it's in the green so it's good and then we need to check the flaps which is here and the speed brake and then the parking brake there and then the acupressure for the brakes or for short accumulative pressure so currently it says in it's in the green so we don't need to do anything the, the one, once it goes here then we need to do something and then we need to check the emergency equipment now here is a fun fact if you see this and it's not lit up you need to put this to usually arm because if you open the door and if you if this is not armed then the well the slides aren't going to come because it's just going to not be armed then we check all the other things and the emergency equipment like here and then we have to check the rain repellent it's there and then check and then CB panels so circuit breaker panels yes circuit breaker panels are somewhere above this so it's yes here you usually pull one of these things but uh, sometimes the sim doesn't work so that's what happens you've also got some nice reading lights so you can just make it brighter and easier to navigate through because uh, it's dark outside because it's currently I think about 630 or something in the simulator so it's quite dark outside then we check the gear pins and covers so that's not and then we do the 
walk around so that's over here now we just see generally like I are there any technical snags or what is there like what is the damage if there is and then after we've done that we go on to cockpit preparation so all white lights need to be extinguished that is basically a fancy way of saying all the white lights just click them that's all that it means some switches are also guarded by some small guards so that you can't press them accidentally because if you do it's non-reversible until you reset it in a factory or maintenance shop so generally we keep that closed for the stop And now we usually what we do is we go in three three things so we do like one then the middle panel then the right panel after that because that how that's how it is now after we've set all the white lights off even there might be some back here it's just the cockpit door here and now we can go on to there is test but it's not working and then that's okay pack captain in person switch then we have to do so when we evacuate it ha has to know like wha who like how many people are evacuating and then all that in words to nav so this all goes to now and then we start the exterior lights so currently if you see outside the plane is not lit up except for these lights so then we start putting the exterior lights so we'll put it to auto put this to and then so basically we, we do a bunch of stuff like that and now if you can see it might have lit up some lights like the red lights on the side and the white lights so then signs of course the seat belt sign so if you are wondering where your seat belt sign switches for that sign that you see in the cabin it's here so you put that to on or auto so we'll put it to on just now and we've got like dim bright storm we've got like different things here it's like when the cabin dims for landing and then pack flow as required electrical panel so now we check the electrical panel and then everything seems fine by the way the air if you didn't know right now it's working the air on the apu bleed so that means it's working on like a like, like a generator that's making AC like the air cool but like soon we'll have to turn that off because if this wasn't on this sign that says APU bleed right here then you're just going to be sweating in the aircraft unless it's cold outside we already checked the battery and now we do the engine fire test Now we can see it says engine 1 and 2, engine 1 and engine 2 the same. Now it usually says over here and like if you look closely it tells you what to do. Like it's really smart that's why a lot of, a lot of pilots like Airbus like me also. And then we check and then the audio switch to norm and then the ventilation panel we have to check so that our cargo can be cold or it can be hot because there is a cargo hold which is usually meant for pets or precious goods that are supposed to go in pressurized uh, ca cargo holes and then I says then check the clock 
and the Isis, which is here. So this is the Isis. It's there like as a backup in case one of the main one fails. So this will always be there. And this is our clock. It's all working. Even it's really weird that it's still saying it's 2021 and it's already 2023. Yeah, and then there is our anti-skid. Then we go to the pedestal. Over here, we can check like everything here. Where is the throttle is and like everything there. So check the switching is normal, which is normal. Thrust levers are idle. Engine masters are off. An engine mode selector is norm. Parking brake as required, so we'll just keep that on. Gravity gear extend, which is this. So in case the normal landing gear is not coming out, there's a thing to just unlock everything and let gravity pull the gear down, so that doesn't take uh, any hydraulic pressure. Usually, uh, actually, unusually used even on emergencies and then ATC on standby we don't need to worry about that FMS prepare and we go to glare shield which is this and then the FD so just check a bunch of things and then the loudspeaker as required it's over here this knob so it's the loudspeaker we just want it at half and then this is our PFD primary flight display and the ND navigation display over here so then we check that and then the ecam status is all good and then we perform the takeoff breathing and that's the end of preliminary cockpit preparation and cockpit preparation checklist thank you for watching and see you sometime soon bye